Welcome back to the highlights for chapter 3. This is covering key graphs 10 through 13. What we're going to look at here, as we saw what merits demand and think tries for supply, now we're going to take a look at simultaneously shifting curves, uh, as opposed to just demand curve shifts or supply curve shifts. We're taking a look at um, the uh, two of the curves shifting at the same time, uh, supply and demand, uh, both at the same time. So if you need a refresher on what merits demand or think tries for supply, go back to the, the first video covering key graphs five through nine to help you out there. Uh, I go through in a little more detail on what merits demand and think tries for supply, uh, but I thought I'd include these here just so that you have them. Uh, but we started off with uh, looking at the perfectly competitive market, upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve, meeting at equilibrium point E at a price level of P one, a quantity level of Q1. And these uh, simultaneous shifts now mean that something is happening uh, in demand and supply, what merits demand and think tries for supply. Something's happening at the same time to lead us to a, a simultaneous shift uh, of the supply and demand curves. And that's what we're going to take a look at in this video covering key graphs 10 through 13. So if you need uh, key graphs 5 through 9, definitely go back to the first video. This is covering the uh, simultaneous shifts uh, in terms of what we see here. So uh, let's uh, take a closer look here. In this case, we have a supply curve shifting leftward. Supply is falling, but demand is increasing. So maybe it's a technological problem, but uh, demand is through the roof for this product. Um, and the question then is, well, what's happening to price? What's happening to quantity as a result of this? So when we see um, that, the, that the supply curve is shifting leftward, but demand is shifting rightward, we can see that the, the price is rising, quantity is rising as well. Um, but in another possible outcome, we can also see that uh, demand is increasing, but supply is decreasing. Again, same as the first one. But in this case, we have price level rising and the quantity is falling uh, in, in those terms. In terms of uh, what we saw here, we saw quantity rising. Here we saw uh, quantity falling. And um, Oh, how do we know? How do we know to be able to tell the difference? Well, it's a great question um, because what we have to look at is uh, what the outcome is going to be, and it's going to be what we call indeterminate. Uh, when we have two curves shifting at the same time, we have an indeterminate either price or quantity. Uh, and as you notice from this grid, you can see every time you have a simultaneous shift in supply and demand, one of those items, either price or quantity, is going to be indeterminate. That's always hard for students to understand, but I always tell them. If you have both curves shifting at the same time, you know one of them is going to be indeterminate. You don't, don't you just don't know which one. That's where you got to graph it out in order to, to make that determination. Because as we saw in the previous slides, um, we don't know whether it's, it's quantity uh, that is going up or down. And in this case, uh, we can see that it's both. Uh, so how do we know what to label in terms of whether that's up or down? The answer is we don't. Uh, so when you see this scenario of, of supply decreasing and demand increasing, what we saw here, we see quantity is indeterminate. So the best, that's the, the best way to remember it is if uh, supply is going up and demand is going up uh, in terms of increasing, uh, shifting to the right, we see price is indeterminate. Quantity is increasing, but price is indeterminate. When supply is decreasing, but demand increases or shifts to the right, then we see quantity is indeterminate but the price is increasing. When supply increases but demand decreases, we see that it's the quantity again that's indeterminate, but in this case, the price is dropping. Supply is increasing, leading to uh, probably more efficient ways of doing it, but, but the problem is nobody wants it. Demand is, is decreasing as well, so the price is dropping. And then with supply decreasing, uh, we have demand decreasing as well. We say price is indeterminate. So with the supply dropping, that means uh, there may be less out there for you to get, but less people want it as well. So uh, the quantity drops, uh, but the price is indeterminate. So this is a good way to determine how do we know whether uh, whether it's up or down. And the answer is indeterminate is uh, your best method of, of determining that based on a simultaneous shift in supply and demand. So now let's take a look at the key graphs. So key graph 10 is basically where we have price and quantity um, that are impacted here by a, a supply curve that's shifting to the right and a demand curve that's shifting to the right. Maybe it is uh, an increase in technology and efficiency and, and the, the, um, the price of inputs is actually dropping, leading to a greater supply that's able to be produced. That's wonderful news for the marketplace. And the product has uh, really taken off. People love the idea of the product. Um, and so demand is increasing uh, as part of a shift in taste and preference. 
iPhone 11 perhaps could be this model. Uh, demand increasing, people really want it. Uh, supply in increasing because uh, there's new ways uh, to innovate and, and create these products. Uh, but what we see here is price is indeterminate. The quantity definitely increases. We see from E1 to E2, Q1 to Q2. Notice that they're both labeled. Uh, you can't just label E for equilibrium and not label the quantity. Uh, that would lose you a point in, in terms of uh, this key graph. Uh, but the idea here is price is indeterminate because supply is moving right and demand is moving right. We don't know whether this price level will be up or down, and that's why it's indeterminate. Because again, with two simultaneous shifts, we have one of those that's indeterminate. Quantity is clearly not the one uh, because it is increasing in terms of the quantity available, and uh, the price level then is indeterminate. So that's key graph 10. And again, for key graph 11, if you need to pause here before I explain it, please feel free to pause the video and uh, write down the graph in your graphing notebook before you do that. But here's key graph 11. So this is the opposite happening as what we saw in key graph 10. Uh, maybe we have a, a shortage of an input uh, that is... Um, that is in the in the process or maybe a, a subsidy that's been taken away by the government or a tax imposed leading to a supply curve shifting to the left uh, and we also see maybe there's a problems or, or bugs or something uh, within the the, pro the product that's being sold leading to a, a shift in demand to the left um, so that's leading again to a smaller quantity but a price level that is also indeterminate so when we see them moving uh, supply and and demand moving again in the same direction we see prices also so indeterminate here, uh, just like we saw in QGraph 10. When supply and demand are moving in the same direction, we see prices indeterminate. We saw the same thing here in QGraph 11. In key graph 12, uh, here we see there's going to be a, a, a split in terms of which way they're going. Now we see supply shifting to the right, and we see demand shifting to the left. So maybe there's a more innovative way to produce this product, but the demand for this product just isn't there. Uh, maybe the, the taste and preference hasn't shifted. The, the market hasn't, it hasn't grown, but actually has decreased in terms of, of the availability of this product uh, to others. So that could have an impact here. And so what we see is the quantity is really indeterminate in this factor when we have this split, but the price level is, is falling. The supply curve shifting out, we're producing more of it, which would normally lead to a fall, and demand curve shifting inward, uh, which also would, would lead us to a fall. So price level falling, quantity is indeterminate here in key graph 12. And then in our last graph for today, we have a split simultaneous shift, but in this case, supply curve is shifting left, demand shifting outward. So maybe it's a new product that uh, everybody wants to get their hands on, but a factory fire uh, that was producing this in, in China or in Indonesia or something uh, that basically burnt uh, all of the products that were destroyed, all the pot products that were available. Uh, and so um, they had to rely on their other two factories and it's just not enough to keep up with demand. Uh, and, the, and the factories won't be online again uh, for some time. So supply curve shifting left here, availability of inputs, uh, shifting that curve to the left and the demand uh, through the roof in terms of taste and preference or availability to consumers uh, in the market, uh, shifting it to the right. So here we see the prices going through the roof, uh, quantity indeterminate in this factor. Uh, price because of the shifts in supply and demand, so supply shifting inward, demand shifting outward, leading to an indeterminate quantity. And again, one of those being indeterminate if we have a simultaneous shift in su supply and demand. Supply going down in this case, or inward, leftward, demand going up, or outward, rightward. And uh, hope you'll find that helpful. A couple of activities to do after this. Uh, please ask for activity 1-8, 1-9, and 2-1 as we start to look at how we're allocating these resources. Hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.